knock brushes all over the place. I'll grab a paper towel. So the first thing we're going to do is just kind of maybe get like a gray going here. Just like a light gray. Just got to re vitalize some of this mess, this slurry. And first things first, I'm just going to paint the coils real quick. Just hot and heavy. Okay? With this light gray. I'm going to rotate. I'm going to utilize the heart pull. Maybe do a little scraping. Yeah, that's easy. Look at that. And I've already painted three GW Forge World contemptors very recently with Volkites. The, the, these ones are so much better on this uh, 3D print because they're more like having, it's more like they have quad plasma coils. And so they don't have these like incredibly unnecessary deep furrows. But what we need to do is just kind of get that real estate shifted off of that really dark gray. And then we'll pull the airbrush out here in a, in a, in a minute. So just starting with a nice light gray. Because I'm going to do a second pass with the airbrush white. So just rotating the model, doing my best not to slop this on anything else. And it's just crudely dry brushed. Just barely slap some metal down on there. So there, we just locked that one in. Too easy. My puddle just got all wet. Yep, I just lost opacity like crazy. wetter. I'll work it out with the airbrush though. It's not a big deal. Just constantly rotating the model looking for easy access points. Always take that split second. Just move the model so you don't fuck up. Just some quick heart pulls, drag it back. Just take your time. It's highly repetitive because it's four identical coils. Yo, it's my boy Rottweiler right there. Rottweiler coming in clutch. Dropping some legendary support down on the stream. Says, found your 101 doc, emailed it if you tried your service. You drag your servers properly with paper, towel, bounty, a better. That wouldn't have happened. <laughs> you know. You know exactly what's up. Alright, let's try it. Now let's let's rinse the brush off. 
I'm gonna grab some pure white. I'm gonna try something a little wet, a little new. Maybe, I need, maybe my wet palette is just a little busted right now. I'll say. Let me grab a little bit more ball titanium. I'm gonna try taking some ball titanium. I'm doing kind of like a targeted wet dry brush here. I'm gonna aim at where it meets the gun right here. See that? Just some um, ball titanium right off the palette. Do a bit of a pre highlight here. I'm gonna go in reverse where it's gonna be brighter at the bottom. A lot of times we just kind of spray the top just because it's easy, but we're gonna go, we're gonna gotta flip the script here. Where's the brush? I'm going to split the difference. I'm just going to kind of heal the, mi the midfield a little bit. Looks like I got a little warm gray in the mix by accident. That's fine. kind of running a loosey-goosey strip right where the white the white meets the gray nothing too crazy switch it up let's go down to a smaller brush let's go hot and heavy let's try to rebuild that white strip than that so just trying to get a little bit more gangster right there a little more aggressive High opacity, low moisture. Get it right up against that seam. Rotate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repair this one a little bit right here. A little bit of moist gray. Wow. Torch, what up, brother? I'm going to dry up the big brush a little bit, put a little white on it. I got a paper towel on my lap. I'm just going to kind of dust the tops.
Alright, that's good enough. Let's turn the old compressor on, guys. Let's, let's get off to the races. Let me find my little switchy. Got my hose. Oh, the switch is so far. The obesity is real. Alright. Let's pull out my airbrush from the supple green. Grab some water, run it through the old airbrush, clear out the solvent. I'm just gonna rinse out the pot. Give it a hobo rinse. Thank you, Rottweiler. Let's move the wet pallet out of the way. Shatner, what's up, man? So now we're going to mess with these plasma coils. I did a quick pre-highlight on them. Now what we're going to do is put a little bright yellow green in the pot. Might ramp it up a little bit with some transparent yellow. A little flow improver in there. Water, but really thin it down. Okay. Nice transparent mix here. What we want to do is just lightly spray the coils with an even coat of similarly transparent green. Don't sit there and try to build it up to be opaque. Okay? Just get it all to be around the same low opacity for a first pass. So everywhere where it's gray, you see it's like a more desaturated, muted green. And everywhere where it's white, it's much brighter. Still desaturated though. This is like a real quick and dirty way to get yourself some sweet ass coils. So I'm gonna do kind of a second pass. We're gonna ramp up the intensity. Right now that you have one even coat, kind of dried and laid out, you can do a second pass and kind of ramp up that overall intensity. Miss half damage. What's up, girl? Long time no see. Second pass. Wow. <laughs> right, <why the? laughs> You're not looking at my hand. You're looking at the bottle. Frozen Hobbit, you'll get a kick out of this, but I'm thinking about what you said two weeks ago, and I'm watching how you're holding the airbrush instead of watching the mini. <laughs> I 
You guys didn't even coordinate that? No one's ever looked. No one's ever asked why there's no quick release valve. No one's ever asked any of those questions. Holding an airbrush is a lot like learning how to use chopsticks. It's the right way to hold it or wrong way to hold it. But you can hold the chopsticks wrong and still eat, you know? Oh, I'm just spraying my brush continuously. Frozen started holding it like that today, and finally, finally. Told you it's gonna be. It's like learn. It's like here. Here's your spaghetti dinner and your chopsticks, and I just showed you how to use chopsticks. But here's a fork for now. You know, like you'll figure it out as you go. You see how like close I am? Like I'm like. I'm able to just get in there and just paint exactly where I want. So I'm ramping it up, stacking it. You see I'm getting more and more saturated, but there's going to be a moment where I'm going to stop because it's going to stop getting more... Uh, it's going to stop revealing any of that pre-highlight that we did. So I'm just kind of waiting for that moment to occur when I've decided enough's enough. And you see how much more yellow this bright green is because I, I, I snuck that uh, transparent green in the mix. So we're getting a like, real nice neon pop here. <laughs> Talon, no sound, but it's the thought that counts. What do you mean? You don't have sound. Oh my god, War Pigment. You're ridiculous with your... I saw the first message and the second message. I'm like, those are the same message? Yeah, War Pigment, the thumb grip that people do, it's its because holding an airbrush is uncomfortable for most people. So the people go to this because this will give you more control than the inchworm position. But what you want is you want to stabilize the hose between your pinky and your ring finger, force it in line with your index finger like that. And then now your index finger, if you notice, when I airbrush, it's a stretching cat. It's not an inchworm. So now I'm using the most dexterous tool-making finger on my body in maximum control. This is how airbrush artists hold. This is why there's no handle here. It's not a handle. If you and most people don't pay attention to the hand, they're looking at the action. Ultimately, you know, people figure out what works for them. But if you try, if you switch to this grip, you probably will see some more accuracy. Just ramping it up again. I'm getting a little sloppy now where I'm letting some of the green hit more of the gun real estate. Where it's going to just fuzz into that midfield now. Like just being a little bit deliberately messy. Maybe we'll let some just kind of bounce off of the front right there. Real low opacity.
Now, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll modify hobo rinse, a little dirty paint water in the pot. Shake it up. I'm gonna put, squirt a little transparent green in there. And this will just kind of introduce a nice deep green. We're gonna thin it down even more just to respect it. I want you to make sure the needle is correct in there. Pop this little cap off. Yep, clean the tip. So now I'm gonna kinda just try to focus down on the mid game. See that? Looking for that strip between the top dry brush pre-highlight and that bottom line we drew. I'm using this to kind of blur any inconsistencies out and stay in the mid game. And in contrast, it's going to make the bright strip look brighter. go got to sneak inside too that's gonna be tricky I have to rebuild some on the top. There we go. Just, just stacking it, real low opacity. Rockstar Panda, simple green? Yeah, I use simple green. Right now I'm just focusing on blurring. Any inconsistencies I see. I really want to start ramping it up. Got to make sure that paint is flowing. Rinse it out. You gotta squirt some water in the pot. 
do a quick rinse. Put the cap back on. Let's go back to the bright green. Got like a dry piece of paint in the pot. I just saw it. I'm going to keep it a little bit more opaque. And I'm going to try to cheat the angle. So I'm just spraying down at the top. to help saturate that color a little bit. A little bit more water. There's basically no paint left in the pot, but I'll be able to get some water down green. Cleaning the tip. Now I'm going to sneak in again. And work that tip. Just trying to get a nice, clean, saturated finish. Now we gotta do more with the paintbrush than that, so let me put the airbrush away. Mac Ducky. Thanks, man. Alright, so now let's run back to the cradle. Got a little bright yellow green. I'm actually going to steal some white now. And I'm going to try to get real, real tight here. Before I was being pretty lazy because I knew I could get away with it because the airbrushing steps. Now I'm using the heart pull. I'm, de I'm definitely deploying more effort. And I'm just like really strengthening that line. As you can see right there. You left the gate open. Where are the keys? Oh my god. One second, guys. I left the gate open like a fool. No, no, it's okay. Just give me the keys. I'll do it. They're in my pocket. I have to find them.
Saren, it's okay. It's okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Forgot to uh, also flip my laundry. It's gross. Can't believe I left that gate open like a fucking hobo. <laughs> That's right, little little left. Rowler. All right, let's get back to it. So let's just get this little strip. And this is a different way of doing it. High opacity, low moisture, little heart pull. I'm just bringing some, try not to put my hand directly in the paint. We organize the model so you can just Gently pull back. And I'm really just trying to ramp it up. God, how many times I'll put my hand in this? Just keep laying my hand out in that fucking brown on my palette. There we go. I let that one get a little wacky. I'm gonna move back to some straight green to see if I can work that out. There we go. 18-0, Jossie Josh. And now we got to do some on the top. We got to be meticulous here as well. Some green and white. So I'm going to just carefully run these heart pulls. Like so. And I'm deliberately hitting the coil. So that there's still a little texture in it for the actual coils. And this is a fun, different way to do it. With how blocky these coils are, I just thought it'd be cool to do it a different way. I'm using like a modified heart pull position here. Make sure sometimes it's good to put a little flump pooper down, funky bass. Thank you for the follow. This is an 18 0 synthetic brush from King's Art. I use them a lot. Could also use the X10 from Monument Hobbies. Similar result.
Just gonna want to use your eyes. Stay focused. Oh, not not in focus. Speaking of which, there you go. You see, you get a different effect by doing it this way. And with big fancy guns like this, you know, you want to definitely take the time to paint them cool. Because they're like a free focal point on the model. So look for that position. I'm locking my fingers together. You see how I'm connecting them here at the front? Looking for just quick little strikes back to my heart. Barely having to move the brush at all. And it looks daunting, like, oh, there's so many to do. But you realize it quickly, it's not that long to actually hit them all. It's a pretty engaging task. It doesn't really bother me. It's not, it doesn't feel as repetitious as it may seem. So now we got some, some glows on the coils. We got some cool effects. You can even go a step further. You can take some of the bright green we just concocted. And you, if you wanted to move around and ramp it up in a couple of areas, like you might be able to even hit this shelf if you're careful. And that's like the metal frame. Right there. Just kind of ramp it up slightly. It's not a huge impact. So I probably won't keep doing it. I'll probably just do the outsides just to make them even. But I will double down right there looks like I forgot to hit that Now, you could go infinite on these coils, okay? You could also try to set a little pin wash in there if you wanted to. But I'm, I'm happy with this. Like, I'm happy with this. Like, I feel like it's a reasonable amount of effort uh, that we deployed on the coils. We were able to use some shortcut tricks. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little bit of the bright green solo. water it down just a little bit and I'm going to repair a little glaze right there because my white strip is just still a little thick right there so I'm going to just kind of soften it with a little bit of glazing tech and it's going to soften the impact of that white strip a little bit but it's also going to enhance the, the overall feeling of glowing you just want to use a little water take some of the moisture off your brush just kind of work the zone between your little glowy strip and it's going to just kind of enhance you can even see it kind of coming together Give it a little it gives it like a little Photoshop blur. Take the 
that moisture off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit this one again. I think I can actually ramp it up. I'm gonna go back to the white for a second. Wrap it up. Tight. So this is a, this is a quick uh, opening to the show. Quick uh, plasma kind of effect, you know, alternate coil effect instead of just trying to do center mass bright. Uh, we do like the light sources inside the inside there, you know, a little bit of a back and forth, but ultimately, you know, we can just call it right there and it's the guns are fine. Now there are a couple spots where I let some of the OSL sling, like right here. So you might want to just see if you can get away with a little edge highlight with some green and some white. Switch to a heart pull. So like like it's bouncing off of some of those features. That's a hard spot to get. This little shelf right here. So now we got some sweet guns. Since I have the green out, I'll just rinse it down. Actually, I was gonna do turquoise. I've got some turquoise over here. I'm gonna just throw some moisture in it. But we painted his eyes white, and now we're just gonna take a a lower opacity turquoise. And kind of just wrap it around his pupil, his whole eye lens. Let a little get on his cheek. Got a little bit further up than I wanted. But that's okay. So now he's got a bit of a... Kind of a glow going on there. So what you want to do is you just want to add water. Lower the opacity. You see like right here. Like super thin down. Take a lot of that moisture off. I'll be too wet. Too too low in opacity. And what we want to do is just kind of draw like a little border for the turquoise right here. Low, like real low opacity. Just let it dry. Stack it again after it dries. A little bit of his eye lens is coming out. A little bit of that color. Nothing too crazy. We gotta do 
Missiles, since I have white here, I was just going to quickly... Go through. Step up like a warhead on them. Missile racks can be obnoxious. So I find that it's just easy to just kind of suggest that there is something going on here. I left them in that in that dark gray. And now with a high opacity, low moisture stipple, you gotta be careful not to like fuck up the stipple like in a, in a make it like an oblong shape like I did there. God damn it, this is hair. Rex. It's so obnoxious. Frozen Hobbies says, God damn, this model's looking tight. Thanks, man. Since I have some of this white, keeping it high opacity, I'm going to just carefully draw a little slice in his eye. To help it have a little bit of a core. And now, the cool with the missiles, we can leave them white. Or sometimes it's fun to introduce like a, another cool color, like or another just neat color, yellow perhaps. Like I was thinking, yellow missile heads just now. So what you want to do for that is just again get some moisture out. Got some water and some yellow up over here, just transparent yellow. Drying it up. And what I'll do now is just kind of quickly repaint the warheads. The dollop of this transparent yellow. And that's a hell of a lot easier than trying to draw a yellow dot over basically black. The yellow has almost no impact on the black, but it takes a lot of color information or a lot of value information from that white.
that a, a layer of complexity. Plow, plow, plow. Okay, this web palette, it's cached. It's pissing me off. It's days old from painting my contemptors here. I need to reset it. Love minis. Don't forget to sleep in a plane. Love minis. I'm going to try. I'm a bad plane sleeper. Bonet is like, oh, hey, look, there's our seats. I'm like just squished in there just like, uh, I hate my life. But I'm going to do my best. I'm going to try. So I got some water, some flow improver. I think this is how we made our our color scheme. So I'm going to try, I'm going to start off with just maybe some quick pin washing. So I'll take the black because that's just going to work. Because black is a big part of this paint job. And I'm going to lower the opacity, make it semi-opaque, a little wet. And I'm going to use the hard pull strategy. And I'm just going to carefully get right up in where the gold trim meets. And just give myself a nice dark border. The objective is to make these little dark pockets darker okay so black will work it's a little disrespectful over here so if we make a mistake on this side you know you're gonna pay for it more but it should ride right semi-opaque and a little wet just drag it in there and it'll lock in the frame provided some more sharpness now getting between his legs is not easy god damn And let's just get in tight right here. Semi-opaque helps it stay respectful. A little bit of moisture helps you spread it. It helps you lift these elements off the frame. Just using straight up paint, semi-opaque and a little wet. Heart pull strategy. By mod by mod by keeping the opacity and a little on the light side, it'll help. Anytime you make a mistake, it'll just kind of dissolve into the real estate a little bit. And see how it just helps lift those elements off the model. Get that nice little separation. Move up here. Just kind of lock them in. You know what I'm saying? Same kind of situation with this banner love minis. Using the heart pull, we're able to get a nice straight skinny line. I messed up a little bit right there. I let the tip of the brush kind of get caught on that edge and afflict it. Set in. See, it just helps create a little separation. It's a it's super important step, in my opinion, on models like this. Semi opaque, a little wet. 
see if we can get inside the red here. And normally I'm not going to be this disrespectful, but this these really um, thick panels have really simple grooves to embed in. So when it's a little bit riskier, then you want to respect the color combination a little bit more. But I can get away with just semi-opaque black. And I also embedded black in everything. So there is a link. Because this was burgundy with black at first. Contrast sometimes just means creating, drawing little fucking borders around shit. And it just sharpens the image. Rhythmic Shadow, thank you for the follow. But I'm using the tip of my brush, embedding it, pulling straight down, stop, rotate. Stop. Rotate. We're looking for just a series of straight lines. See, just clink, clink. Now, we can also do between his uh, foot armor and his toes. A little black. Could be a little bit more aggressive here. because it's going into the metal. I've just learned from experience that when you mess it with metallics, it can, you can be a little on the, on the gangster side. And so you can use an active wash, but I don't never suggest it for like big robots like this. So again, just some black rhythmic shadow, semi-opaque, just a little wet. Now this is where you might want to respect it a little bit. So I'm going to I'm going to grab some of that burgundy. Okay. Cuz these are risky. Remember I was talking about like when they're risky. So we use burgundy on the red. And we're going to just sink some black into it, make a much darker but yet respectful burgundy. Some of you a little wet and see these are much skinnier grooves and so more can go wrong here. So semi opaque and a little wet. Get inside the hole. And if I if I kind of fuck up a little bit, the fact that I respected this will probably protect us. And I'm able to kind of get away with murder on this. Now, as I move it up into the darker spot, I'm going to use more black. Look at that. Azrael, okay, I went and painted the damn faces. Yeah, you did. Big Snow says, did you do a guest appearance on Dice Check? Yes, sir. I played against Matt twice on live camera. I think Matt's going to be on our uh, uh, five-man team event we're doing in California next month. Okay, here's that burgundy black respect mix again. Semi opaque and a little wet. Let's run a quick pin wash on the inside of this. Just let it sit inside that rail. And just create a little border. And by showing it just a little bit of respect, you can get away with sloppy lines. We're going to black it up a little bit here. Get around that skull heart pull strategy. Use the tip of your brush. And we're just trying to kind of aim at where the skull is touching the red. 
and that just generates so much bonus sharpness. There are some nuts, always wash your nuts. So I'm gonna stipple around the nuts right here using the sewing machine stroke. Wow, son. Big snows, I thought it was you. You were awesome. Death Guard game, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yep. Yep, I've been painting a lot of uh, Death Guard lately uh, for the team event. Um, that we're going to be doing. I've got some uh, contemptors. So I may come back down to the Beats Lab, the Dice Check Beats Lab after Death to kind of showcase the new, the new list. Last time we played, we did it more like kind of soft hammer, like softer lists on purpose. And the first time I played was actually my first game of Night Edition after all this lockdown shit. So that was tight as fuck too. Alright. Now, I did some of the red edge high highlighting first. And I remember mentioning that normally I don't do the highlights first. Did I do a pin wash? No. Okay, so see here. Let's take some of that black burgundy. And I usually do this before the pin, the highlight. So that if I fuck this up, the highlight can be the eraser. Now on that little reef. Let's get let's let's kind of stipple around it on like just little sewing machine strokes. Just help elevate it. Contrast is just borders, guys. You see, you we've been, you've been following this project. This is only like three installments, and it's just so clean, so sharp. But we're really not doing much. It's just kindergarten rules, baby. Big Snow followed, and he was just gifted a sub from Recoil. So, Big Snow, show your boy Recoil some love right there. Well, Penguin says the first game was way better. You think so? What is that? What'd you like about it more? Mortarion? All right, same deal right here. Stipple right up against that foot. We got a pretty clean line there. No stipple needed. The stipple around the uh, little reef thing. Get a little border. Let's rinse off some of that burgundy from our brush. We don't need it no more because we did the red parts. Now we're going to go back to just black. Some flow improver and some water. Yo, it's my boy Neezy. The Road to Adepticon. The unwritten book of the road, baby. Neezy. What do you get? You should probably change your uh, screen name. So here's just a little thin down black. My dude. Let's see if we can reach up in here. And see if I can get a, a, a tight line. Right there. Right there. Stipple this nut right here. Always wash your nuts. I feel like there was supposed to be one over here, but there's not one. Must have sanded it off. Or Pigment says, well, the Defiler going ham was nice, but uh, but all the Gene Steals is kind of boring. Neasy, you can do like, did you, Rob DM me a picture of a Long John Silvers he drove by. I was like, get the fuck out of here. 
Neasy, remember what I told you last night? It doesn't matter if you're driving to Denticon from Colorado or from fucking North Carolina. Goddamn Long John Silvers. Get the fuck out of here. Throw in the towel already, guys. All right, let's take some of that black and carefully get up under this banner. Heart pull. Semi-opaque and a little wet. And black is respectful enough on this gray that we created. We're just riding the rail where those borders meet. You see that instant sharpening? Hard pull right here. And you see, look at that side. Look at that sharp MS image. Kindergarten rules, baby. Who was the best kid color in kindergarten and why? And by keeping the mix semi-opaque, like I, I, I reiterate, it fucking will offset any mistakes, usually. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> That's right, Neasy. Dude, you seen that on his Instagram? It was Raising Canes. He was at Raising Canes, yep. Ra yeah, Raising Canes is dope, dude. I love that place. Frozen. What's up with the long what's up with the long John Silvers? They tried Super Briefo to make it in Canada. It could never and could never bust out of the first few locations. Because it's vile, son. We had a Would You Rather. Possibly one of the best Would You Rathers of all time. Alright, right here. Those are tricky because those are long pulls. And they're on a uh, round surface. So you want to be careful. You want to scan your pullback zone. Make sure you don't bump into stuff. It's not even about putting dark lines where you think shadows should go. It's just literally about putting them everywhere to create borders. White castles are pretty good, JBZ. You remember that Would You Rather Frozen Hobbit? I mean, it's literal. Every morning for the rest of your life for breakfast or for our, for, for your me all your meals, a magical delivery shows up on your front door of the freshest, most curated, artisanal fish. Perfect. So there's never a question of the freshness and the perfection. Right? But the, the catch is... You have to eat them like a goddamn golem savage. Like, teeth, ah, guts, everything. Like, I mean, you can spit out the guts if you want, but that's how you eat. Like like him. Full-on fishes. That's your, that's what you eat for life now. Every day taken care of. Or, Long John Silver's. Let's run up here. See if we can get this set up. Tight little line right there. Go boy says White Castle had me doubled over with shit cramps before. We even go a block away. Yeah. For sure. You're going to end up in the ER because of fucking Long John Silver's, though.
Let's get up. Let's get under the uh, coil. Above it. And just be real delicate here. You can even lower the opacity. Let's get under the gorget. Let's just get those separations. And I've lowered the opacity a little bit up here. Just because these are a little trickier and I know I'm going to make more mistakes. Let's get on his face. Separate the mouth guard. Oh, I knew I was going to do that. I got a little... One, I didn't clear my path. Put a little black speck right there. Going to get that in the edge highlight phase. Let's get the mohawk. So like I said, anything that you fuck up, just know that later when we have highlight, that's your time to erase it. Go boy, I grew up with Long John's. Love it despite what it might do to my innards. It's classic love-hate relationship. So you'll pick eat Long John Silvers every day over the fucking savaging a fucking golem raw fish. All right. So let's let's run it right here. Get inside that recess. Let's wash these nuts. Some stippling. Uh, Eva Lurism, thank you for the follow, and Hotter Deathwalker, thank you for the follow. You pick Long John Silver's more pick me? Yeah. Chaotic Painting looking dope. Thanks, man. First time chatter, Evil Misfits. How long have I been painting? Today? Like two hours. Let's run in here with some pin wash, semi-opaque, a little wet. Lay it just where things meet to create borders and shadows. Separate those fingers. Let's run it back on this side. Let's get it, let's lay it down, rotate, look for the little heart pull. Get the fingers. He's got a scratch here. Let's get inside the scratch. <clears throat> Still got to do the highlights. This is just the dark stuff getting darker. Right here, we got a little emblem, so let's just kind of frame it. Put a little. Basically, less than 50% opaque black. Just kind of lock it in. 
Altogether, Evil Misfits? Man, goddamn. Painting minis since the 90s, late 90s. Professionally, my company is 11 years old, so I've been trying to be a professional at this for about 11 years. Okay, let's stipple sewing machine stroke on these nuts. Always wash your nuts. Get him. Let's get these let's get these fingers. Tip of the brush, little heart pull, 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 pull. Painting is just opacity and moisture management. But right now we're just making the dark things dark. Round one of making the image sharper. The washing technique is all about lowering the opacity and keeping some moisture in, the, in there. So semi-opaque, a little wet, we're just using black. And we're being a little disrespectful, but mainly because black is such a big part of this guy's paint job, we can get away with it. You saw that when we moved into the red zones, though, we were starting to sneak red back in. Just some art pulls, some stipples right here. Gotta get those nuts. Wow! Not bad. Keeping it tight, keeping it clean. At this point, you can just be like, we're done. If you want to just say, hey, dog, check this shit out. But you know we're not done. There's a couple spots. Don't want to be lazy. Get a little hard bottom shadow right here. Back here, I want to get around this emblem, create a border. Always take a second to rotate. So now I'm going to move into this red grill here. Back to the red, let's find a darker version of that red by just embedding some black in it so we show it some respect. Semi opaque, a little wet. We're going to use the tip of a brush and pull straight back to our body here with the heart pulled. And you could just dump a wash all over this guy and utilize all sorts of other techniques I show. But I, on models like this, I like to not sacrifice even 1% of my workup. Now all up and down this this border, there's gonna be things like nuts right here. We probably wanna wash these. Going with a little stipple. I like to do the wash technique first. We gotta get around the gold on these. I shouldn't have painted them already. So now this wash is gonna get on the gold. It may ride, it may not. We'll see. Just 
Stipple it, stipple it around it. Give me some sewing machine action. Let's rinse that off. Max Payne. It's Tuesday. What else? What I do? But watch next level painting. How you doing, man? Doing great, brother. Long time viewer right there. Dude. Okay, let's go back to pure black. Forgot I should put some right here on his head between the red and the armor. And I should also try to get it around this skull with some sewing machine stipples. And there's some stuff on here that we, we still need to do. See, don't get lazy. It's, you know, you're so close to being done. And there's even a sword here I miss painting on the missile rack. What you want to do is even get inside this little box. Get around this thing. This mount. Got a little wacky on that one. I'll pay for that in the edge highlighting steps later. Max Payne, seven months back to back. Let's get inside this little box. Get these nuts right here. Stipple. About to come back and paint golden later. All right, so we could probably do a couple edge highlights now with 40 minutes left. Rottweiler, are there a bunch of live stream events at Devcon? I imagine. Do I remember Captain D's? Yeah, I remember Captain D's. <laughs> I can tell him. God damn. Here's some blue, black, gray. I feel like this is most of our work up here. What we want to do is focus on respect. So this is pretty, this is brighter than the darkest stuff, but respect. So I need, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an artificial highlight, high opacity, low moisture, opposite of the pin wash. Right there. So that makes that darker part of our transition brighter. And it's respectful enough that I can get away with some fat lines. Using high opacity, low moisture, which indicates control. So since I still have this loaded up on the brush, let's rotate in right here. I get a nice little line right there. And our job is not to invalidate the wash. You want to leave it intact. You don't want to you don't want to erase it with this. You see that nice little artificial line looks popping. Now what you want to do is use your eyes and as you move into a brighter piece of real estate, introduce a little bit more of the gray and white to the mix. Maybe I'll split the difference for the first line right here. And then go up to the brighter position, rotate. Uh, 
That's that's scary. A respectful little highlight right there. It's very subtle, and that's what we want. Let's get a little flow improver out to help keep the dry tip from occurring. Pull it back to our heart. Try to make straight lines. Rotate the model. Connect the dots. Now, I'll split the difference again. It'll be semi-opaque, but I'll take a lot of moisture off. And I'll drag that brighter line into our wraparound border on this uh, icon. That one got a little wacky right there. So we'll go back further in time. Lower the opacity, take some of the moisture off. So this is basically a glaze. And I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of redo it just kind of soften it and then i'll bring this one out to match it let's run right here right here down at the bottom Got a little wacky. And we'll just kind of heal that up. Pow. And now if you want to make it a little bit more exciting in some of these areas, you can introduce a little bit more white. Like right here. It's a little dry in the tip. You just get a little bit more intrigue built in. that nice crisp just beautiful line work I love that look on these types of armored models let's see if we can get a, a quick respectful highlight using my eyes mm, this is gonna be tricky I think right here on the foot It's just hard to access it. McCool just gifted five subs to the chat. If you just got gifted a sub from McCool, show that man some love. Get that clean line right there. Right there. Angels sang out in the chorus. Down from the heavens, the same 
<laughs> Shout out to McCool. 500 bonus here. That was my boy McCool and Go Boy with 23 months back to back. All right, let's let's engineer some intrigue. Get a little bit more white on the brush. Put a little bit kind of center mass. Now let's see if we can get a, a respect. Go back in time to something respectful. Let's see if we can rotate the model to get a tracer right here. Hold your breath, swing it from right to left. Ride that lip. Got some nice little lines right there. I should be able to kind of do the same thing. On the inside, go boy! Dedicate this tracer to go boy. Get that nut. Go boy, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a tracer in here, so just a quick heart pull. I'm gonna get some strong man loving chat from my boy Go Boy. It is Double Yoda is on this road to Adepticon as we paint this 30k style. Totally not a contempt of Dreadnought. All right, now let's use our eyes and look at that, how dark it is down here. And let's get something that's real estate appropriate. That is still a highlight. Don't think I can trace that. Let me see. Oh, maybe I can. I think actually if I go a little bit more opaque and dry. I think I actually get a little line built. And then if I switch over to a heart pull. I think I could just carefully... drag a, a very respectful highlight in there. I'm going to do it again. Right in the center. So we got a little line right there. Now these ones should be pretty easy. We should be able to do modified tracers here. Or, uh, and just ride the bottom rail here. If you're just careful with your tip penetration, you should be able to get a little under highlight on this feature. Common feature in space marine models. Do that. Maybe get a little bit more white into the mix. High opacity, low moisture. Ray Prey, I never did get your birthday yo dogs last week. You didn't get your birthday yo dogs last week, Ray Prey? Love Minis, can you give me that baby 500 yo dogs, please? You know, I sent that guy a fucking Trader Joe's pumpkin spice. This guy. Season, love you. All right, I'm gonna jump right, right up to his face because now I'm getting antsy to work on his face. So let's move in here, and it's gonna be mostly heart pull. And 
just gonna have to be pretty careful. Rotate. Don't fight it. If it's not transferring off your brush, just move on. Couple little highlights. Let's get that little nose guard situation. Get a little bit more respectful. I think I can trace the side of the grill if I rotate it enough. Getting some definition on the old face. Let's get the mohawk with a heart pull right here. Sneak in here. Kind of down on the edge where is the wires meet. Let's see if we can get a little darker, a little bit safer. Kind of fucked up just a little bit. I think it may ride. Try to catch that little slice in there. The red ones. It's a fatty. Sh it's a fatty shouty. Wait, did you just donate a forty to buy a forty? A forty. I got myself a forty. I got myself a shorty. That's right. So you want me to drink a forty at a Depticon in honor of you, the Canadian duo? I will. Still reserve? Is that good? We're doing that fake highlight now. Right above the pin wash we put in there. There's two of them. Can I get some strong man and woman love for the red ones? I'm gonna get just a tad brighter, the uh, the red ones. And you want, you don't want to, you don't necessarily need to go super bright. That's where the pin washing comes from. The pin washing helps the gray that's already there looked brighter. And I'm just gonna slice in a couple more aggressive shine marks, essentially. So now we have a lot more definition in the old face. Now I'm getting it. That's right, the red ones. We're still bitter about having to cancel the 2020 Depticon trip. 
And you can't go this year because you just bought a house, right? That sucks. I mean, that's congratulations, but. All right, we're going to use the tracer technique for the red ones right here. We're going to hold our breast swinger from right to left and just ride that rail, baby. Horizontal pathways. It's like the opposite of the heart pool. Skinny lines every time. Now, the GW Contemptor is mostly tracers. It's so easy. Almost no heart pull. We're just catching this part of the frame as well. Rotate. Fuck out of the way. And when you have such broad details, you want to get both both edges. Hey, just are you doing getting some of our mix. Hurry and pray, you legend. Can I get some? <laughs> Dirty Mike live exclamation point soup. Reprim trying to get the inside of his collar real quick. With a quick line. Pumpkin Spice was the traditional 29th month anniversary gift. It was delicious. Get the fuck out of here. He's so ridiculous. <laughs> Much love, Repray. The red one says also border shenanigans. Damn. I hope to see you guys next year. And Repray. Repray, let's grab some white. Let's just get a little brighter. Keep the opacity high. Get it right there. A little bit wider. Now let's get back to respect mode. We have to reach in right here and do like a quick heart pull, kind of weird angle. Get that little tube. Might have to backtrack on that last one. this one this one got a little weird so i'm going back in time a little darker and i'm just softening it with less op with uh more moisture essentially now there is a bit of a seam right here so we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower the we're gonna get a highlight lower the opacity and gently Drag this highlight through it. By introducing more moisture, we're making sure that its overall impact is less. It's less than how it looks. Yo! Dr. Foss Painting Clinic. What's up, man?
Coming in with that raid life. Welcome, welcome. What's up, brother? Now, we're going to do some fake ones right here. You guys are just in time. So, we're going to find that respect again. Where we we're taking our three paints that comprised the majority of our airbrush work. We're going to find something that looks like a highlight. And we're just going to drag an artificial line in here. Using the heart pull. Just kind of generating a nice soft ghostly highlight just building that borders how rat lord what's up brother did I just ra did I just raid Dr. Foss as he raided you? Is that what happened? It must have, because I just got raided by him, and now you're here. <laughs> welcome, welcome, first time chatter, Kirks, Kurzik. What's up, man? You guys had to raid at the same time. You guys are hilarious. Ratlord and his crew. Did it actually go through? Is every sound out if you're in here from Ratlord's crew? And you're very confused by this raid, as the rest of us are. Make sure to hit that follow button if you haven't already. I'm over on Ratlord's page right now, hitting the follow button. Looking like some digital artwork. Dope. Sculpting in deep ZBrush, hells yeah. So some some parallel art to what we do over here. So people like Ratlord make the models like the one I'm painting right here. I've always said that we're just coloring book artists. Because somebody, I, I mean, exclamation point spiky resin. This is a maker makes this. We print it out. And then I just draw. I just stay inside the lines. Like kindergarten. <coughs> Ratlord says coloring books are dope. They are dope. I love coloring books. I love painting models, but I acknowledge that the guy who drew like the 300 pages in my coloring book, respect to that guy. <laughs> I paint a lot of maker models on the stream. Uh, this is just, this is a multi-part kit. Totally not a contempt of dreadnought for Warhammer 40k with twin Volkite car carbines. I made a really static pose here. And uh, there is way more posing options than this. Okay, it, it, it's yeah, I was in a rush when I when I put them together, and I'll show you guys just one of the frames of this model. You can see how it is clearly capable of being more dynamic than what I have done here. <laughs> My dude is locked and loaded. So, don't judge his posing. <laughs> Shout out to Rat Lord and Dr. Faust Painting Clinic. Bringing the heat as we are preparing to depart in the morning for Adepticon. <laughs> Kurzg, have I painted Gundam? I don't do the Gunpla stuff. I mean, I could. I mean, I'll fucking wreck that shit, no doubt. It's, it's just a different style. You know, it's 
it's less about you know extreme modulation and hyper contrast and more about perfection and i would ruin that so <laughs> so much because <laughs> i'd be like oh we gotta highlight this we gotta pin watch this seven thousand hours later i'm like okay i fucked up here <clears throat> i'm in the miniature world that's more the scale world even though it's cro it crosses over so like for example i'm about to draw like a fake highlight that you would never do in gunpla right now because what i do is i just create borders on everything make super extreme contrast I use a lot of airbrushing so like right here i'm gonna drag a line that probably doesn't need to be there but i like the i like it so this blue this black this gray were all part of my airbrushing so what I'm doing is I'm creating visually what I feel like is a highlight that is also respectful. Maybe even steal some white. Then I'm going to utilize high opacity and low moisture. I'm going to rotate the model. I'm going to find a way to drag this line straight back to my heart. And it's going to create kind of a subtle beveling appearance. I'm going to rotate this way, same mix, and I'm going to draw one here too. Heart pull strategy, and I'll create a nice ghostly highlight in there that has almost no reason to exist. I'm going to do my best and find a weird angle to get in here. Wow. Rotate, high opacity, low moisture. Pow. Connect the dots. Kowski, have fun at Depticon. I should be the next year, man. I miss you, dog. I hope I was really hoping to see you. Get some strong man loving chat from my boy Kowski. Good night, Rat Lord. Thank you. Now, we're going to do that same thing again. Real tight right here. Okay, we made that respectfully chill, ghostly highlight. And we want to keep our dark border intact that separates the features. You don't want to invalidate that. So we got the foundation established. And now we're going to go up a notch. We're going to add more white to the mix. Get a little bit more disrespectful. And we're going to just kind of ride this rail that we created and that's a tricky angle to access sometimes i dip into my flow improver offset the dry time let's see if we can rotate it from this angle let's see if this is a better angle So we're just going to kind of make that pizza slice a little brighter there toward the tip. Bow, son. Cook cling. We're going to move in here. See if this is a better angle. Nope, that's a shitty angle. It's going to be from here. Get a little bit more loaded up on the old brush. Shout out to Unicorn Master X. Thank you for the follow, brother. Kelsky, you've got a wedding in Costa Rica this weekend? Oof, that sounds like fun, though. 
Brain Fowl, uh, Fowler, who made this guy? Exclamation point, Spiky Resin. Got a link for you, baby. Okay, so I'm going to try again by in, in embed some of this brighter mix. Finding the heart pull position. Light brush pressure. Right there. Get those two little points to connect. You see, he's a very dark bluish gray with some really dramatic black. Thirty K style uh, space tools color scheme. Now, there's lots more elements of his armor we need to do, but when you do some nice dramatic airbrushing, you lock some details in, you don't have to really edge highlight everything, which I haven't. I've been skipping around. Now, definitely want to get some, some of his hand, and I feel like this, uh, this uh, handle that he holds, that his firing mechanism is attached to. So I'm creating a little, a little highlight right now. And I should be able to just use the tracer technique here. And I should be able to just kind of trace the edge of this seam. And see, that's just right in the rail. Using more of a horizontal motion and scraping along that bevel that's an easy that's a much easier brush stroke hold your breath swing it from right to left still want to be real gentle Boom. Heidi, if you play my husband in the team tournament, don't make fun of my janky crons. <laughs> Did you run out of time? Okay, I'm going to skitter down these fingers real quick with some heart pulls. See that? Just real, keep it real tight. Let's get these nuts while I'm right, while I'm sitting right here. That's the stipple. Let's rotate this way. Three and a half minutes left, guys, before we're out of time. We're going to trace the back of the hand here. His, his, his armor panel here. High opacity, low moisture. So it's a nice seam. Trace here. Tracing's easy. But here we're gonna have to just use probably heart pulls. Tops of fingers. Like that. Get a 
the side there. Not bad. Time is a weird soup, Heidi. It is. Project management's hard. About two and a half minutes left, and we've done some good work today. We were able to get the Volkites looking pretty good. Guys, so did some cool airbrush kung fu on those. Got a nice, quick, and dirty effect. We were able to pin wash 99% of the armor panels. We got a nice, clean highlight, uh, edge highlight protocol moving up and down his torso. And this guy, this guy's looking baller, man. What a beast. I've had a lot of practice painting Contempt of Dreadnoughts over the last five days. 